Princess Louisa Inlet is one of the most beautiful places we have ever cruised in the entire world. There is one thing that really surprised us though, and we don't get surprised very often. After a far hour cruise up there from the closest civilization, we found the most bougie Bible camp we have ever seen. To get into Princess Louisa Inlet, you have to pass through Malibu Rapids, and this Young Life Bible Camp seriously has a pool that overlooks the rapids so you can watch the boats, like us, pass through while bathing in the sun. Before this gorgeous lodge became a Bible Camp for teenagers, it was a resort for the rich and famous. In 1940, the founder, Thomas Hamilton's vision was to create a mecca for millionaires, a luxury resort in a beautiful, remote location. He wanted to attract Hollywood movie stars, directors, industrialists, and socialites. Hamilton did manage to create a luxurious escape for the very wealthy, and he did attract some high-profile guests, such as John Wayne, Bing Crosby, Bob Hope, and Barbara Stanwyck. My lover is only a dream, but he's still more of a man than you! Hey guys, this is Janice from Onboard Tangra. Go check out Live Your Life Adventure Challenge. Um, it's been a real passion project of mine and Blaine's. He's been helping out. But go down to the link below. I'd love you to check it out. It seriously encourages you to get out of your comfort zone, live life again, and make 2023 amazing. In 1950, the resort was dramatically abandoned. There are three reasons people believe that Hamilton abandoned his resort. Number one, financial issues. Number two, his wife Ethel actually managed the lodge and they divorced. And number three, the most interesting, a 17-year-old employee died of polio and the resort was quarantined for two weeks. In 1950, it is said that Hamilton's grandson contracted polio and instead of staying at the resort, Hamilton and all the employees abandoned it. The resort was left entirely intact, with food still on the stove in the kitchen and yachts still moored at the dock. Two years later, Jim Rayburn, the founder of non-denominational Christian youth camp, Young Life, discovered Malibu and envisioned a Bible camp for teenagers. Hamilton liked the idea and sold Malibu to Young Life for a measly $300,000. He had been asking for $1 million. And since the summer of 1954, Malibu has been operating as a Bible camp. And as Blaine and I discovered, it gets more impressive each year. Heck! They have bubble tea and a coffee shop. We're going for a little down fall trip and heading to, what's it called? Young Life. Young Life Christian. Yeah, let's see if we can get a tour and look around. And of course, halfway there, we the realized we had money. forgotten the ice cream money. Like seriously, who needs money in the middle of nowhere? Oh wait, we do for ice cream. On our way to the Bible camp, we stopped and visited McDonald Island Park. How sharp was it, Izzy? It's not that bad. Except um, I'm wearing shoes, so. I cut my foot. Oh, everybody's got flip-flops on but me. Abby cut her foot. Oh, no. I'm going back to get flip-flops. Oh, those hurt the feet without flip-flops. Everybody's talking to the ranger there. She's very helpful and nice. And it's nice having the park rangers, but the whole oyster beds here are closed. Woohoo! This is cold, girls. <sighs> Woohoo! Okay. <laughs> And we witnessed the campers from beyond Malibu return to their base camp. So that was fun, and now we are to keep going. Now we're going to Young Life. We had to go get money for ice cream, which we have. We're going to gunk haul our way up to Young Life and check out Malibu Rapids, maybe take the dinghy through. When we arrived at Young Life Bible Camp, we were extremely surprised to find tour guides waiting for us on the dock. Unfortunately, there were no dogs allowed in the camp, so Cooper and Maggie had to stay in the boat with Blaine, but we promised to bring Blaine back some ice cream. So we put this in at 20. 
17. Everybody needs a coffee shop. And we'll come back down and go down what we call Main Street. Right here. We'll talk all about all this on the way back. Are you on a tour? We're on a tour. Gym, space for our gym. Cool. As you know, it can rain, so we have indoor space like this. You can oh, you have to warm up. Okay. Here you go. Uh, basketball, volleyball, rock climbing, weightlifting. Oh, Izzy, look at the rock wall. We create all of our own electricity through a hydro plant. And the hydro, hydro plant, plant is actually all the way across the Jervis Inlet on the other side. And right kind of in the saddle, mountain saddle, but then there's a lake up Lake McConnell. Lake McConnell runs down, and then about the 1800 foot mark, we have a pen stock where we, we absorb the water out of the fall, pull it down to a hydro plant, and we have a cable that runs all the way across the Jervis up to that power station right there and then that goes into our power grid which is in the building behind it distributes it all throughout camp. we have three generators in there it's backup generators so hi. this is Kai say hi to Kai everyone hello hi. everyone and welcome to Malibu I love it the salmon so if you want to talk to your parents and they're buying stuff for you you're free to you're free to shop and of course, Abby and Izzy's ears perked up when they said shop. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, Blaine and I did not have our credit card, so they went to Papa Mike. What do you guys think? Good. <laughs> yeah, you're nice and warm now? Yes. <laughs> what do you guys say? Thank you. We <laughs> said thank you so many times. minor surgery when I went walking on the gunk hauling um, I sliced my foot before I put the flip-flops on there's something black in the slice so ouch Blake's doing surgery oh fudge it goes that hurt it's not a splinter it's just dirty just dirty yeah okay good because that really hurt sorry it's way down in there okay I'll just soak my foot in Epsom it should come out then yeah no it doesn't appear to be just dirt yeah it just looks like dirt 